Hello and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively, to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Hi everyone, this is Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to the podcast. Today I'm standing on location in the English seaside town of Western Supermare. I'm on holiday over here, as you're probably aware, I live in Australia. So my wife and I are on a one month holiday to the UK and I thought I'd look for opportunities to do podcasts while we're away to try and keep up my weekly schedule and uh, just find some interesting locations and things to talk about. So here I am at the beach, as you can see behind me. I don't know how much detail you can see on the video, but it's not a particularly attractive part of the beach, particularly for an Aussie, but that's another story. Uh, This particular beach has a lot of mud on it. Now on that side of me, there's some sand and it goes up to the promenade and the shops and so on. But on this side of me, and I'm standing pretty much on the boundary, from this side down, there's lots and lots of mud. And this has uh, personal relevance for me. I remember vividly as a child of about eight years old, we came on holiday to Western Supermare and we were staying in an apartment somewhere. And I got up early in the morning, one morning, and my parents were asleep. So I thought, well, I'll go for a walk. And I put on my boots, Wellington says they're known over here, and and, uh, walked down to the beach. And I walked into the mud and I found some thin mud and that was pretty fun. And then I found some thick mud and I thought, right, well, I'll step into that. And I took two steps and got stuck, completely stuck. I could not get the boots out of the mud. And I was afraid of leaving them behind and getting in trouble for losing my boots. And so I stood there and I burst into tears. I was absolutely petrified that the tide would come in and I would drown. Thankfully, A man walking along the beach saw me in my distress and came and rescued me, pulled me out, and I went back home. I can't remember if I told my parents what I'd done or not, but I'd never forgot it. Later on, I thought, you know, it probably wasn't as dangerous as I thought. I was just a little kid, and, you know, it was scary at the time, but, you know, you get over these things. However, coming on this holiday a couple of days ago, my parents said the at at another beach near here there have been a number of rescues from the beach and in fact there have been a number of fatalities and there was a recent fatality where a four-year-old child got stuck in the mud and couldn't be rescued couldn't her father couldn't get her out and she drowned terrible story anyway the local community rallied together and bought enough money uh, raised enough money to buy a hovercraft. So now they have a rescue hovercraft that will come down and rescue people who get stuck. It happens so often that they have to do that. So, so what? You know, you might be wondering, why am I raising all this and what's this got to do with maths? The point is this, wherever you live, whatever the local context, there will be real maths that you can do. So in this situation, looking at the mud, there's a bunch of maths that you could do. For example, when I looked up the tide times for here, it also included the heights of the tides, as they do. The difference between the low tide and the high tide yesterday was 9.2 metres, which to me sounds like rather a lot. Um, And I know that tides vary by different amounts in different parts of the world. So here it was 9.2 metres. So you could do some calculations of the slope of the beach. You could have your students measure the horizontal distance and the the vertical drop, work out an angle using some trigonometry. And there are various other ways you could do it, work out the average fall down the beach between the high tide and the low tide mark. Knowing that it rises 9.2 metres um, and knowing the time difference between low tide and high tide, how fast is the tide coming in? How quickly would you have to walk if you're going to beat it? Uh, my, 
My mum told me a story when I was a child of a beach in France somewhere where the tide comes in faster than a horse can gallop. And I remember thinking as a child, well, if I was stuck in the mud, I'd run very fast. And my mum said, I remember, no, you couldn't. You would get caught by the tide. So how fast does it come in? Um, in terms of the hovercraft, you could look at how long it would take the hovercraft to rescue somebody and how much time would they have once they knew someone was stuck, that sort of thing. How much force is there required to pull something out of the mud if it gets stuck? Um, as I said, I couldn't pull my boots out, but the man who rescued me could, and he's obviously bigger and stronger than me. So there's just lots and lots and lots of maths that you could do. And this might not be a topic you would be interested in, you might not want to do this topic, and certainly the story of the little girl drowning is terribly sad and might not be suitable. But certainly the children in this area, I suspect, know of such stories, so you know it makes it a relevant uh, connection for them. But my point is this, and this is a theme for me, you'll hear me talk about it if you watch my podcast for any length of time. It's important to connect the maths that students do in the classroom with the real world, and preferably with their own experience. So we need to make the maths real maths and connected maths. The maths has got a point and a purpose. I think every teacher faces the question, when are we ever going to use this? And probably maths teaches more than anybody else because maths involves a huge amount of theory, probably more than any other subject that we teach at school. And there's a lot of theory and a lot of formulas and a lot of um, you know, complex mathematics that a student may go, I can't see the point, what am I doing this for? So the more connections we can make, the better. I remember reading a research paper when I was studying my master's degree about children who were doing real world maths outside their classroom. Uh, they were working in markets and they were selling things. Pretty sure it was in Brazil. And so they were handling money and they were helping people to purchase things, giving them their change and so on. They didn't have calculators or paper and pencil, they were doing it in their head. And of course they got the answers right. Uh, one reason being that it was real money and it was their money, so they, they had a stake in it. But the researchers followed these children to the classroom and observed them in the classroom and interviewed them and gave them similar questions to the ones they were, they were uh, dealing with in the st on the street. And what they found was absolutely astonishing finding. They couldn't do the maths in the classroom. They'd often make mistakes and there was a sense from what I remember that they weren't committed to it. You know, they weren't that interested. And so it didn't matter that they got the answers wrong. And they would make mistakes, as I said, and you know, there was this dramatic contrast between what they could do on the street, which the writers called street math, and what they could do in the classroom, which they termed classroom math. And that really opened my eyes, and I hope it, it um, you know, causes a bit of a revelation for you, perhaps, that there can be a difference between the math that we do in the classroom and the math that our students do outside the classroom. And obviously we want to connect the two together. We want to make our math, the math that we teach to our students, useful now. You know, if they're going to go and do math outside the classroom, and hopefully they will, we want them to know what they're doing and get the answers right. And so that's my encouragement today. Uh, and, I, and I know it's similar to um, the sort of message that I was bringing on another podcast number five about practical math. Help your students to make the connection. Take them outside the classroom. There are opportunities just in the grounds of the schoolyard that you can do. Um, in Australian schools there are often gardens and they're often um, quite concerned about um, the environment and, and recycling rubbish and you know there's masses and masses of opportunities there that you could do. Here I am standing on a beach and we could do lots of maths with regards to the beach. So let me encourage you to do that with your students. Find opportunities where they can do some real math and uh, really make connection. Thank you for joining me on the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. 
You can email me via peter at classroomprofessor.com or follow me on Twitter with the username peter underscore price. You can also visit our website at www.classroomprofessor.com to download free resources including the ebook 10 Minutes a Day Times Tables Worksheets. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate the show on iTunes. I look forward to speaking with you next time. And until then, goodbye.